Greetings. <laughs> awesome. Greetings, Tom. Wow. All right. Welcome, everybody. This is World Drum Club. I'm Kalani Das, and we're here with Tom Teasley, world percussionist, teacher, uh, performer, artist. Thanks, Tom, for, for joining us today. My pleasure and honor. Yeah, and thanks for that music. I feel like I just had a whirlwind tour of global percussion. <laughs> well, it, 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 was, it, uh, it was a little bit of, of just kind of ver a very brief synopsis of what I'm doing with, with taking a variety of world percussion techniques from different parts of the world and applying those on frequently drums from different parts of the world and combining that with some digital technology and then my mo more recent interest in coming back to American jazz drum set playing. I noticed that the drum set had that kind of classic, you know, 60s, 70s, like tuning that, you know, we might associate with like a, a Max Roach, uh, Tony Williams kind of, you know, higher pitched toms and things. So, yeah, that was kind of nice to hear you integrate all that with the with the drumming. Could you just quickly recap? Not that we're going to go in deep on any of this, but yeah, you, looping, different drums, drum set. Yeah, techniques. So, so exactly. So let me see if I can clear this loop. Um, so I'm, I'm using I'm using uh, an electronic hand drum, which which allows me this this is kind of a, I have it programmed to be kind of an Arabic ensemble with darbukas and ricks and things like that. It could also be this is a bim deer. Mm -hmm. Tabla, Santor. So, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in, in taking elements of something, uh, of, you know, these, these drumming traditions that are very ancient, and finding a way to integrate that with something that is, is, is modern. Uh, in the same way that I like to cast a wide net with uh, the geography and, and the different cultural influences that I use. I'm, I'm also interested in taking uh, a wide net in terms of the timeline, you know. So, so I, I f you know, this is probably the most ancient drum that I'm playing, the, the, uh, the frame drum. And, and, and it dates back to uh, ancient Mesopotamia. And I had an opportunity to, to tour in Iraq, Iraq about, I don't know, seven years ago. So I was, I was playing uh, and, and collaborating with, with musicians who had been playing this drum, you know, <laughs> since, since, since the beginning of time, possibly. And, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a good drum, actually, to demonstrate my, my kind of pan-global approach to all this stuff. So when, when, when let me, when, when they play, they uh, use this, this finger snapping technique that was later developed and I'd say perfected by, by Glenn Velez, who was my teacher. So since each finger has a different size and, and weight, it's, it's creating a different sound. And then there is the Indian stroke on this that, that it, you see used in Kanjara playing and Tabo playing, so the split hand. And then this is a stroke that comes from uh, from Italy that, that I learned from our friend Alessandra Belloni. And then this is a stroke I borrowed from flamenco guitar playing. Mm. So on, on any given performance on this drum, I'm, I'm probably using cultural influences that would, you know, maybe from half a dozen or, or ten different cultures. Uh, I'll I'll just play a little bit and talk and talk about some of the techniques as, as they as they're going down. This is the moose call that we know from Afro-Cuban conga playing. So here's the the Mesopotamian style. Whoops! There goes the flamenco. Here comes the Italian. So it, it's it's interesting to me that uh, 
drumming, kind of like language, is uh, that there are there are only a certain amount of ways that a hand can efficiently move on a drum, and I, I think it's cool when. Uh, you know, when, when you're taking a, a drumming style from, from one part of the world and then using it on a drum from a different part of the world because it, it uses the drumming as, as a way to kind of make the world smaller, you know. And, of course, that, that was happening uh, during the times of the Silk Road and, you know, in slow time. But, but now, with, as we were talking about earlier, uh, with the Internet age, this is happening, you know, instantaneously. Uh, somebody can put up something, and then, uh, like I, you know, I have friends from all over the world, that, and, and they'll they'll send me a message or post something. So well, this is what I'm doing, and 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 and, and that that ping pong of information is 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 going back and forth so so, so incredibly fast. It's it's an exciting time, I th I think, and it's an exciting time. I mean, I mean, the world has become so binary. I mean, certainly our country can be that way too, but uh, that it's it's really it's really positive when the music can be something that that kind of meets us in the middle, and and you know because because music doesn't care about your politics or your religion or any of that stuff. You know, it it, it, it just it just cares about 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 the music, and and while the the drumming techniques I think work very nicely. Uh, in combination, I, I find that the same rhythms actually come up, you know, and, you know, for, for example. That kind of rhythm, I mean, it would be a bayoun in, in Brazil, a, a malfouf in the Middle East, it, you know, it, 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 it resurfaces over and over and over, and, and you know, and, and there's many other examples of that, and, and I, I wonder why is that? And, and I think that it's not an intellectual thing. I, th I think it's because the rhythms feel good. And, mm -hmm. and, and there, there's, a, there is a, there's a tendency to, to connect music with movement, you know. And, and, and when something feels good, you know, a groove feels good, once again, you know, it doesn't care about your politics or your religion or who you voted for or anything. It, 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 just, it, just, it just is kind of like this unifying thing. And... And so that that makes me uh, even more excited and committed to you know to to using my work with music going forward in the world to you know to try and uh, bring us a little bit closer together. That's great. And along those lines, uh, you and I have both traveled to back and forth to China, done some teaching in China, have collaborated with with people in China. Could you talk a little bit about? And I think this is an appropriate topic now with all the political and economic tensions can you talk about how you are your collaborations in china have have taken shape yeah so well uh i i, I collaborate with uh with a, a brilliant uh young young shen player uh, which is a chinese hammer dulcimer and her name is uh chow shen tian and you know it, it's a it's a perfect example b because uh when we play, and, and especially when we first started playing, uh, you know, she comes to the table with a, a, an amazing, extensive background and knowledge and history of, of traditional Chinese music. I mean, she was, you know, she, she's very young, but she was touring when, you know, she was a touring child star at like nine years old or something mm. like that. So, uh, and, and, and I come to the table with kind of my American jazz world hybrid thing, but we never really spent a lot of time like, well, this is what Chinese music is, and, and this is, th and or I say, this, well, this this is the way it would work in a 32 bar form or or something like that. This is this is you know this this is this is a funk groove or this is a you know this is a swing thing. We we must adhere to that. We b because uh, she's speaking English much better now, but but. Initially, not not much was was spoken, and that that's kind of very common for me in my travels. So so we, we let the music be be the dialogue, you know, and and so it was like I felt like I knew so much about her and everything just from sharing music with her that when I actually went to China and and met her family and everything like that it didn't seem foreign to me even though we hadn't mm -hmm. talked an awful lot about it so mm -hmm. it, i it's just it's just very powerful um 
regarding my other, yeah, I was I was mostly teaching there. I was teaching at uh, Beijing Language and Culture University, and and the the students there are are were you know they could not have been more welcoming and and kind and generous with you know with me and and certainly respectful i mean that's that's one thing the chinese culture certainly understands and uh you know it was one usually when i travel do these tours it's it's via the state department and i'm staying at you know maybe a swanky hotel or something like that and i mean and i'm ordering breakfast in and maybe eating in the restaurant but but this was very different i, I had an apartment and then i would walk through like a little kind of enclosed market to, to my practice and teaching studio so every day you know I had to I had to interact and and at the market I would you know I, I buy some fruit and a little bit of food you know to make my breakfast and lunch so so I was you know I, I learned learned a few words of Mandarin but 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 I was engaged in the community in a in a very different way and it's just very it's very interesting to me that uh, that you know how you know, even like somebody at the market that was already you know that's already speaking r very good English. They were very patient while I, while I was trying to, you know, like you see eins, but you know, try, trying to count out you know like like how how many dollars or how many yen I, I owed them. But yeah, it was it was it was a fascinating experience. Maybe um, since you are you do come from kind of a, uh, a well you incorporate um, jazz improvisation. Uh, one of the areas that some cultures around the world, and I know every culture does improvise in their own way to a, their own degree, uh, but in, in the idioms that you practice, and I think uh, you as a performer, I think the improvisation, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the improvisation factor is, is pretty high. Um, in some other cultures, it's low uh, for various reasons. Um, can you talk a little bit about maybe that experience of because i know when i've taught in china you know pe people are a little uh there's a little trepidation to go outside of the lane uh and it's not something that's necessarily even encouraged you know it's a very kind of you learn by rote and you learn the traditions and you play it this way and that's fine that's how we start that's how we learn but um what was that like just being yeah, an improviser and, 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 you know uh it's, at some point i'll share it, it's funny you should ask that be, because I, I probably got 12 videos of me teaching improv classes there mm. and 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 the process is exactly as you described uh they're, they're very slow to to get going in it but then once it happens it's like it's like somebody turned on the electricity i'll, sh I'll share this one story because i think it's very poignant um as I was getting ready to leave, a young a young woman uh, knocks on my studio. S since I was sharing a, st a practice studio r uh, building with the with the, the population, you know, I, I saw the same people over and over. So knocks on the door, uh, Mr. Mr. Teasley. In, in your in your lecture, you were saying that you know we we need to really find uh, areas of self expression, but but my teacher tells me that I only need to work on technique. So of course that that's a that's a sensitive area that that I, you know to to try and negotiate, and and I so I, I don't think they necessarily have to be mutually exclusive that that it that it is indeed possible to 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 be engaged in both. And she said, I don't know how to begin, you know, which to me it was like I I, I just played like a baby, like a child before I even knew like how to read music or anything. So so I said, well, just just play uh, play a scale. So very dutifully, you know, plays a scale. And I said, now now play uh, now just don't play all the notes in order. And so she very dutifully like picking <laughs> out you know different notes. And, and then and then I said, well now now play some that are loud and, and soft or something. So so I heard her doing that. And I think I checked my phone to for some reason. And then I looked down at her and and she's she's in tears. You know, she said, you know, she was she was a young person, maybe 20, 22 or something and, and, and had been playing probably since she was six or seven. But she said this was the first time that she had ever experienced I expressing herself through music. You know, I just I thought, <laughs> you know, it, it was it was it was such an eye opening thing to me. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it was I, I and I think the world needs more of that. You know, and and one of the things I like to, to talk about when when I'm 
uh, touring to music schools, but but not just to to music students, but to students in general, is 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 finding finding your thing, you know, and 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 you, for for a musician, you know, my thing, you know, was combining uh, my my interest in jazz and 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 pop music and funk music with with my interest in world percussion and uh, I'm interested in, in visual arts and things like that. So, so I found a way to kind of merge all of those. Uh, and and once, once you do that on business level, I, I, I think it's positive be, because then then you're only you're only in competition with yourself. You know you, you're, you're, you, you have not made your uh, your watermark uh, a pre-existing, you know, Steve Gadd or Giovanni Hidat. You, 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 you have you have created a new, a new marker for what it is that that your that your goal is. And so, on a business level, I, I think that's positive. But but it, it, on a, a level of self-expression, I think it's even more important because because we we all know that regardless of what you're doing, be it music or whatever, but maybe especially music or the arts, uh, you know, it, it it's a, it's rough. You know, so if all that, that you have to, to keep you going is the, the, the next Steve Gadd lick you're working on or, or the, the next Max Roach lick you're trying to perfect, I think all of that is great. But, but if that is like the alpha and the omega of your experience, you, th there's no chance of, of success, you know. But, but if, you're, if you have a, a wide view of, of some kind of expression that you want to leave the world with, then it then it becomes ve it becomes a very a very different thing you know so so one of the projects I'm doing recently is uh, is is I, I play live soundtracks to silent movies so uh, you know I'm getting ready to tour uh, Nosferatu coming up you know because of Halloween but but I, I just did uh, Charlie Chaplin's Modern Times and Buster Keaton Sherlock Jr. Wh which are you know the first time I've done American physical comedy in a while. And I have, Where and can I, people find? Can people find that? Is there a recording of that? Of you yeah, doing that? I, ha I have some of these on YouTube. I, I generally don't put the movies in their entirety up on right. YouTube for general consumption b b because sometimes presenters uh, will want to do that. But if somebody would like to get in touch with me, I'd be I'd be happy to share. And and there is uh, a short clip that uh, a videographer did of, of the Charlie Chaplin modern times. So well, actually, I, I should mention that I edited that down to, I think the movie is about an hour and 20 minutes, and I have it down to like 15 minutes. So for, for my own selfish purposes of, of trying to find the, the, the fun physical comedy uh, with, with the percussion and, and catch the, the, the kicks mm -hmm. and all those things as, as they fall within the groove. Mm -hmm. I did that. But, but if somebody wants to, uh, to, to go to my YouTube channel, they, they, can, they can catch that or, or send me an a email. I'd be happy to share that. Awesome. I'd like to interject a suggestion for people that are watching. I want to take both of those things that you just talked about, improvisation, how, what's the doorway into the path of improvisation? And you mentioned change a few things, right? Do something that you are familiar with, but change the order, change the dynamics, change a few uh, of the elements of music. And so this is a suggestion for people, and maybe you can take uh, add to this. One of the ways that I would encourage, or I, I don't want to use the word trick people into improvising, but I'll just say that as a, as a kind of side note, is to play to the TV with the sound off, right? You just watch, because we, you, if you play to something else outside of yourself, right, it gives you fodder, gives you ideas, it gives you a reference point, and then you make the music to it. So I think, you know, people could develop their improv through what you're talking about, right? You're, you And you were, you know, rehearsing and practicing the music for a silent movie, but that general idea, right? Play the, yeah, play the music idea. to... Yeah. I, I, I think that 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 is great. Another, you know, and, and again, this just kind of goes to show, like, like when you get into something, you never know where it will end. But but what you're talking about is it, it, it's brain stimulus, you know, and and then that that's giving giving you stimulus to create something on top of that. Another right. another area that uh, that I worked on probably 15. 20 years ago that I started to develop with a colleague of mine is we took a lot of, of Langston Hughes poetry and I set that to, to music. So, so I, I, I would also say that if you can find, if you can find some written word, you know, it could be from a religious text. It, it could be, you know, a, a Martin Luther King speech. It, it could be whatever it is that, that has a, a deep meaning to you. 
and and maybe read that and then try and interpret that. Uh, another, I, I just did a, a residency for non uh, music majors at Sweetbriar College in Virginia, and uh, and I said, okay, now we're going to do solos, and 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 everybody, ah, solo, I, I don't know what to say, and 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 and, and so so it, it began something like, don't worry about playing in time, don't don't worry about any technique, just think about a conversation. So it would be like, hello, how are you? I'm okay. My name's Tom. My name's Sally. What are you doing? I think I'm going for a walk. Oh, you know, and 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 when 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 you when you start to attach your music to to self-expression like right away, it it, it it comes to the table with a with a very different uh, power than when it's one, two, three, four, one, two. You know, you know, and and and, and there's there, there's a time for all of that. So 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 I'm I'm not I'm not making fun of, of that as a as as uh, as a means to an end. But but I don't I don't think it is the end. And and I'm not, I don't really think it's the beginning either. I I, I think it, it is uh, you know. But before somebody learns to to read or 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 spell, that they're already communicating verbally. So, so I, th I think that, that just starting to communicate something that, that is with, with, that's here, you know, th that, that, that is so powerful that once, once, once you taste that, you know, once that becomes a part of your experience, then all of the different ways in which you can manifest that, uh, you know, th then, then th they are interesting. Then it's not just, oh, I'm just quarter rest, quarter note, quarter note, quarter note. It, it, it because, oh, because this is leading me to something else that I want to express or I want to pass on to someone. Right. I was, uh, I'm just recalling a workshop or, or class, uh, I think it was at a, at a PASIC conference with Dame uh, Evelyn Glennie, who is a master, you know, performer, musician, nearly deaf. Uh, and her just, she touched on a thing with a, she was saying, describing a, a lesson she was giving with a student and she asked, she said, okay, um, play this piece that you're playing, but I want you to imagine, you know, we need to, we need to tell a story. So, I mean, she basically said the same thing. You, you have to think of something. What, what's happening during this story? What is it about? What is this music about? Is it about a bear? walking through the forest or what, what it's got to be about something because there has to be some feeling there's got to be a message so um with that actually i want to i'd like to get back to some music i know people are kind of probably chomping at the bit like hey let's let's hear tom play some more so could i could i invite you to pick uh now you sent me some pdfs before that have some thematic ideas some some uh devices you know based on some devices could you pick one of those or or something else um and maybe yeah. play a short piece and as an example of, of maybe a window uh, how, uh, into improvisation. Because, of course, when we play, we don't want to play everything that we can play, right? Usually when we play, we play within some parameters. You know, it's a piece. It's not everything we know. And that's another mistake I think people, young people make. They try to play every all their licks, right, come out when they get to play a solo. But if you don't mind, yeah, could you tell us? I'd be happy to. So, so, yeah. so, so there's there's the one of the PDFs, and and I I, I you 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 are free to share those with people if you want. They're they're PDFs I use in my workshops, but but in the Indian tradition there is a concept of rhythmic patterns that occur at different rates of speed. So so they're not thinking in terms of time signatures, but patterns. Now these patterns become more interesting when they are an odd number because when they go at the next speed higher it sounds like they're syncopated at like if it starts at the quarter note the second speed would be uh, syncopated at the eighth note level and at the third speed at the 16th note level so so if you don't if you're not reading music it's okay you can understand this uh, intuitively so it'd be like ta gi ta ta gi ta I went back to the first speed. So, so it, it has this kind of like you, you can follow the even if you're not following it uh, intellectually, you can you you intuitively are following the 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 systematic of it, the logic of it. You could take a five beat cycle, ta na gi na tom ta na gi. Na, tom, 
ta na ge na to 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 ta so so as an example of how i will take a a germ of something from one culture and apply it to to my sense of self-expression. Uh, I've taken a 12-beat cycle, which is usually in our culture, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But I'm going to go through 7 plus 5 and then th run that through all these speeds. So so don't, don't worry too much about counting it, but, but just kind of let this stuff flow over you and hear the vocalizations as they're coming. I'll run through one uh, repetition of it only vocally. Ta. Ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na second speed ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi ta ki da ta na ge na dum ta ga di mi So, so that that's an example of you know it has like a little bit of Indian in it you know I, I mean uh, the syllables the the basic concept, but it, it's it's almost like I like I've I've taken turmeric or you know I've taken a spice or something mm. and and I've put it into New Orleans jambalaya you know and and I I really think that it's very. It's very, it's very uh, deep into the American jazz tradition because if you think of, of jazz as being initially uh, African rhythmic sensibility coupled with European harmony and melody, I, I'm, I'm looking just to, to expand the gene pool. You know, if you take a look at the, the American drum set, excuse me, let me put that down. Uh, and we're gonna, you know what, and we're gonna, um, we're gonna continue more in a second, but real quick, give people an intro, and then we're gonna say goodbye to people on YouTube okay. here for free. We're gonna go over to yeah, and, the and Patreon maybe site. we can pick, pick up that. But but the American drum set is the the snare drum and the bass drum from the European tradition. The tom toms were from China, and the cymbals from from Turkey. But Baby Dodds, who was putting all this together in the 1920s, he didn't know about Turkish music or Chinese music. He had he had a uh, a, a idea of something that he wanted to express musically and socially and, and personally, and he used those tools as a way to implement that. So anybody, feel free to reach out to me if, if you'd like to. I, I, as, as you can tell, I'm, I'm passionate, too, too passionate maybe, about talking about my work, and, uh, and, and, I, and I, love to, I love to share it with people. So thank you all so much, and I look forward to seeing some of you at the Patreon. Yeah, we're gonna continue. Um... So don't go anywhere if you are, if you guys are on the live right now as we're as we're in this session. But what we're going to do is we're going to say goodbye to the folks who are watching afterwards for free on YouTube. And if any of you would like to connect with Tom Moore, Tom Teasley website, there'll be a link below. And uh, and then you're you're free to continue with us. Tom's going to do a little special lesson for patrons. Uh, coming right up. So um, feel free to at any point join us over at patreon.com slash Kalani. 
uh, and I'm gonna we're gonna stop this part of the recording, and we'll, maybe we'll see you over there. Thanks for watching and connect with Tom. Uh, he's a wealth of information.